What is up guys, Rick Hackis here, going over the Aegis of the Kel 2. Now the Aegis of the Kel Kinetic version is available either just directly from Varix, depending on what week it is, or available through a Judgment's Chance. Now the 2 version is only available after killing Skolas or the level 34 boss as a random drop, and it spawns with a random element. Mine happens to be Solar. Now let's get started with the review. First off, let's go over the stats of the Aegis of the Kel. Now the first thing you'll notice is that rate of fire is decently high, impact is about second highest. You can actually get lower than this impact, but if I compare it to a very powerful pulse rifle like the Spare Change, the Spare Change actually has the same rate of fire and impact as the Messenger, you can see that it stands nowhere near the Spare Change's impact, but it does have a lot better fire rate. Now, range is not amazing, but stability is. Stability and reload are both very, very high on their own. There is no perks here that affect stability and reload. They are just natively extremely high, so that is a huge benefit for this pulse rifle. The magazine size is actually 21, which is pretty low, but it does come with extended mag that kicks it up to 30. Now let's move on to the perks of the Aegis of the Kel. First we have solar damage, again yours can spawn with any element. Next we have three different optics, and we actually have a close range, medium range, and long range optic. This diversity is great. Now the first perk is Rangefinder. Aiming this weapon increases its effective range. This is pretty useful because the range isn't great, but the stability is quite high, allowing you to get very long range kills. Now, for the next group of three, we have Extended Magazine, making it go from 21 to 30. I like to use this in PvE. Next, we have Fitted Stock, even further increasing the stability. This is what I like to use in PvP. I just love maxing out the stability, making this weapon insanely accurate. And last, we have Flared Magwell, simply increasing the reload speed. Now, unfortunately, the last thing we have is Drag Burn. Now, your Aegis of the Kel can spawn with one of these Fallen perks randomly. It can be Drag Burn, Shank Burn, more damage to all Fallen, etc. The problem with these perks is that they're extremely specific. And I'm not sure why Bungie went from the great game design of, let's for, uh, go for example, to the Black Hammer. It has a useful perk, Mulligan. And then it has a very specific PvE only perk, Hive Disruptor. Again, I'm going to go here to the Hazen Vengeance. This is a Vault of Glass weapon. It has a good perk, Merv Mini, rockets fired, split into several other rockets. And then it has a very specific PvE perk in Oracle Disruptor. I'm not sure why Bungie went from that and then cut it down to only one perk here. Because the problem is when you're playing PvE and you're not fighting Fallen, or you're playing PvP at all, Dragburn is entirely useless, and this gun really has its fight cut out for it because, again, it's literally one perk down when compared to other pulse rivals that you're fighting in the Crucible. So again, this is really bad game design by Bungie, and they're really going to have to address this. Now, how does the Aegis of the Kel perform in PvP? Well, firstly, it does 27 damage for a headshot and 18 damage for a body shot. Now that damage profile definitely isn't bad, I'm glad this has a little bit more impact and it isn't the one of the extremely low impact pulse rifles, but honestly I did enjoy this gun in the Crucible. The stability is insane and that's further helped by the fitted stock attachment and it means that you can cross map people, like I was consistently getting headshots from across the map with this gun, it is insanely accurate and because of its damage profile you're only required to get a few you burst before downing an enemy as long as you get headshots but again the insane stability really does help you get those headshots it also has a very very good base reload speed again the reload speed automatically is insanely high and that is just a great attribute to have as well in the crucible now this does kind of counteract the relatively smaller magazine of 21 but again the reload speed definitely does not go unnoticed now even though I really did enjoy my time with the Aegis of the Kel 
in the Crucible. I was doing fantastic with it, and I will be using it again. The problem, again, lies with that stupid drag burn. Bungie does like to copy and paste weapon stats, so you can find another pulse rifle very easily with the same rate of fire and impact. Again, they copy and paste rate of fire and impact all the time. Then you can re-roll it until you get essentially the same stability, but you will have one extra perk that isn't drag burn. So you can really build your own Aegis of the Kel and it's probably going to be better again due to having just one more perk. That being said, of all the different Prison of Elders weapons I have tested, this is definitely my favorite for PvP. Now how does the Aegis of the Kel 2 perform in PvE? Well, initially, just the fact that it is elemental is insanely useful. Elemental guns are always more useful than kinetic guns in PvE. Now, that's because they don't do less damage for damaging the wrong shield. So you're essentially always doing the same damage as a kinetic weapon or more when you're damaging the right type of shield. So those only benefit when using an elemental gun. Now because this can spawn with a random element, the Aegis of the Kel 2, if you get one, might become one of your most used guns or completely useless. And again, that's because it's a random element. If it's Arc and you already have the Fatebringer, you're probably not really going to use the Aegis of the Kel that much. If it's Void and you don't have any other Void guns, you're going to be using it all the time. That's just how it works. Now statistically this gun performs admirably but doesn't really excel at anything. It's definitely not terrible at killing enemies, but you know it definitely could use a little bit more damage. And don't be fooled, that drag burn perk hurts it in PvE as well. You're most often not fighting and even if you are not needing to do more damage to dregs, and you're definitely more suited with a better third perk here, uh, for example like Outlaw. Now because of this gun's fairly average performance in PvE, if you get just the kinetic version, I don't see you using this gun a ton in PvE. Again, it's all about getting that 2 version so you can get it with an elemental spawn. There's nothing terribly wrong with the stats of this gun, however, it's just pretty average. If this is your first legendary, I can see you getting it and enjoying it, and it's a great benefit that this gun starts at 365 attack no matter which version you get it in. In summary, the Aegis of the Kel 2 is a very useful gun. The insanely high base stability and reload are very useful traits in both PvP and PvE. PvP more so allowing you to really snipe guys with this pulse rifle. PvP, there are better options considering which element you get it in. I mean, each player's inventory is different, so this gun, again, could go from insanely useful to never used. Base stat-wise, though, there is better options, but there's nothing terribly wrong with the Aegis of the Kel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more Destiny content similar to this. And as always, have a good day.